Thank you. Thank you for the privilege of the podium. I have no disclosures. Today we're going to introduce enhanced recovery protocols and the role of prehabilitation within them, work to date on prehabilitation, and how we can use the concept to push enhanced recovery forward. Surgery is stressful, creates a state of multimodal stress. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on enhanced recovery as you've already heard about it, but enhanced recovery works by decreasing the stressors with standardized care pathways that cover the entire surgical experience for patients. There are evidence-based practices that optimize recovery, patient outcomes, as well as costs. And there's guiding principles that we use for enhanced recovery. They've become known as enhanced recovery after surgery. But this is actually a misnomer, because enhanced recovery to work well has to cover all periods of care, including intra-op and, importantly, preoperative. There has to be a shift in the way we think from enhanced recovery after surgery to just enhance recovery protocols to help us improve our outcomes. And we need help because currently we have patients that are complex, aging, and challenging with additional needs after surgery, as well as a transition to a value-based care system where we're going to have to change our management and focus on performance metrics to deliver the best care for patients. There's also um, unexpected failures of patients with enhanced recovery pathways that impact outcomes as well as in patients that successfully follow enhanced recovery that have complications and reduce postoperative function. Our interventions now are aimed at addressing complications that happen after surgery. To move forward, perhaps we have to focus on the state before surgery, and instead of rehabilitation, prehabilitation. Before surgery, our patients are in better condition. There's no concern about disturbing healing, getting to chemotherapy, waiting for test results. And in some systems, patients may have prolonged waiting periods before surgery. So it could be the ideal time frame. This concept of intervention before surgery is prehabilitation, and it can change the patient's entire surgical trajectory. Prehabilitation is defined as the optimization of function before a stressor occurs, and it's associated in activity. So you can improve postoperative outcomes and return your patients back to their normal functional state. There could be specific benefit for prehabilitation in high-risk patients who have inherently more complications, as this 20% of our patients usually consumes 80% of healthcare expenditures. Prehabilitation is multimodal. We have to consider medical optimization, physical training, nutrition planning, anxiety management and mindfulness, lifestyle modification, as well as patient and caregiver education. All elements have to come in play for the system to work well. Going through the literature briefly, the first major work came from the McGill Group, and prehabilitation was evaluated for improvements in cardiovascular and musculoskeletal adaptations to the stress of surgery. The authors designed a 12-week training program looking at aerobic exercise, strength, and flexibility training. And they found that patients that were prehabilitated were more fit before surgery and then remained at better functional levels through the entire recovery period. While this was 13 years ago, they had the insight to see that this could have a great impact on reducing the cost of care. Seeing that there was a benefit in prehab, study was undertaken to determine the most responsive measure of functional capacity after surgery, looking at improvement from a four-week study period. The authors then looked at both maximal and submaximal exertion to see which measure was the, the best way to measure prehabilitation improvement. And they found that the six-minute walk test was the most responsive for both submaximal and maximal activity. Following that, construct validation of the six-minute walk test was performed as a measure of recovery in both the preoperative, three-week postoperative, and six-week postoperative periods. That's now become the standard. The Sentinel randomized control trial looked at structured prehabilitation versus simple exercise, which was just walking and deep breathing exercises for improvement in the six-minute walk test, activity level, and hospital anxiety and depression scales at baseline, before surgery, and at the follow-up period. The results were actually surprising. The simple exercise group had improved function before surgery, not the prehabilitation group. Both groups had a functional decline after surgery, but it was worse in the prehabilitation group. The authors concluded there was no significant difference between the two groups, but that the simple group had improvements in functional capacity, and looked at the fact that 
poor adherence to prehab was a possible cause of this. With that, the authors reevaluated the same data set in order to determine how functional capacity was improved with either program, simple or prehabilitation, and how changes could impact postoperative recovery. They looked at the group that improved with prehabilitation. They found that in this 33% of patients, those patients were the most likely to recover to their baseline after surgery. They then used a multivariate model to determine the predictors of poor recovery, and they found those were patients with advanced age over 75 years, high anxiety level, complications, and deterioration of functional level during the prehabilitation period. With the limited impact of exercise alone, the authors then expanded to a trimodal program and performed a randomized control trial to evaluate the impact of that function versus standard care. In that, they found that the prehabilitation uh, pre group had better six-minute walk tests, they maintained higher activity levels throughout the entire recovery process, and significantly more prehabilitation patients recovered to their baseline or above their baseline after surgery. But while prehabilitation improved functional capacity, there was no significant change in postoperative outcomes between the two groups, including length of stay or complications. Study was then performed to determine if prehabilitation or rehabilitation impacted recovery more. Where should we intervene? And the authors found functional recovery improved with prehabilitation, seen at both four and eight weeks after surgery, and that a higher percentage of prehabilitations returned or exceeded their baseline function compared to the rehabilitation group. So with this consistent message, several systematic reviews were performed, several of them, looking at cancer patients, looking at abdominal surgery patients, looking at the elderly, looking at the elderly with cancer, having abdominal surgery. They all basically said the same thing. Prehabilitation is safe, it's feasible, and at least one measure of physical fitness is improved with it. But in the current literature, there's limitations in the design, heterogeneity in the data, and we need to do better and more robust studies before we can make valid conclusions based on prehab. A specific study that was of interest is in prehabilitation in rectal cancer patients undergoing neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy. The authors looked at the baseline before therapy, after neoadjuvant therapy, which was their time zero, and six weeks later, which was their preoperative period. In this particularly frail population, they found that prehabilitation helped combat the decline in function from treatment and improve patients to or above their baseline before surgery. So something to consider. There was also a recent randomized control trial of prehabilitation that was done just in high-risk patients in the elderly or comorbid. And in this patient population, it was the first time that we saw postoperative complications significantly improved, as well as the functional outcomes, showing the benefit in this patient population. So where we are to date is that prehabilitation can improve functional levels. We know it has benefit over rehabilitation, and that improvement in function is durable and that there may be specific value in oncology or high-risk patients, but improvement in general for postoperative outcomes is still debatable. So far, the data is limited in its impact on prehabilitation after surgery, and there's inconsistency in outcome measures and variable compliance rates to the programs. So to move forward right now, we know a focus on frail patients could be a key to success, as we see by a recent um, commentary done by Drs. Feldman and Carly from McGill as well as focusing on ways to engage patients and get them involved in their care before and after surgery to move the process forward. So as we move the literature into practice, we can look at our guiding societies for guidelines. And there's several of them that work together and work alone to develop the guidelines. As far as prehabilitation currently, not so much is published. The joint statement from SAGES and ASCARS is the closest but there's no specific statements on the, pre the prehabilitation regimens, just support for the process in general. 
So where we are now is we need to develop the standards. We need to decide what should be included in prehabilitation guidelines. What we're using right now hasn't been consistent in its outcomes, so perhaps we have to look at muscular strength, quality of life, executive functions, and other inflammatory or metabolic parameters that could help. We also have to determine how to best measure them, when to start measuring them, when to stop, as well as validation and consensus statements from their outcomes. And above all, we need patient buy-in and to consider what the patient's limitations are as far as if they're going to comply and why they're not complying. And we have to change our thinking in supporting our patients. Athletes are elite performers. In recent years, there's been a focus on surgeons as athletes. This stemmed from the Atul Gawande New Yorker article back in 2011 and several others that have followed. And when you look at the tenets of athletic refinement, it's true. Directed exercise, rest and recovery periods, proper equipment, mindfulness to our performance, visualization and studying performance, using teamwork and support systems to move forward, streamlining our tasks, and using proper nutrition and diet. We do all of this to be the best surgeons we can be. But I'd like to push you to push your patients to train as athletes, not just yourself. And when we look at prehabilitation within the athletic refinement, we can see it fits perfectly in that framework, using equipment, directed exercise, rest and recovery, diet, mindfulness, studying performance, streamlining tasks, and teamwork and support to get patients into their best shape during surgery. So in conclusion, to move enhanced recovery forward, we should start the care pathway before surgery with prehabilitation. Literature to date shows improvement um, in physical function in all patients as well as outcomes in high-risk patients. But comprehensive standardized guidelines are still needed and the surgeon's role in prehabilitation can help by training athletes like, training patients like athletes before surgery. Thank you. <laughs>